All right, so this is another really cool project I've got that I'm working on today. This is a loop collet chuck that I got from MLA. It's metal lathe accessories. You just Google metal lathe accessories and it comes right up. They're in Pennsylvania. Really cool cast kit. So it comes with these three components here. This is the, the locking ring. This will accept a 5C collet thread. Uh, this is for 5C collets. And this is the back plate and then, of course, the main body. This is a separate back plate that I'm making up so I can put it on my dividing head as well. Uh, I did some pre-machining at work on a big lathe because uh, if I tried to do it on my 9 inch it would have taken me forever so I've roughed out this here you have to grab onto this to start to machine the back and I roughed out the bore and uh, you're supposed to leave this cast but I have machined this uh, to clean it up a little bit and I've also roughed out the back on the, the inside of the back and I've cleaned up some of the casting marks as well so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I have all the steps written out, you know, I have to do them on a specific order uh, based on some of the stuff that has to be done. There's actually a bearing race that has to be on all three parts, well, four parts, of the, of the three main parts, but I have two back plates. Um, so the bearing race is going to be done last, so I can leave the tool in, set up in the lathe, and leave it in position, and then I can just remount each piece um, as I go along and indicate it and have the bearing race come out exactly in the same spot every single time. So some of the steps are not all the same for each of the back plates. Uh, this is the back plate that I'm going to be using on the lathe. Um, so first for this one I have to bore and finish thread the inside. The back has already been completed. I finished that at work. So I'm going to have to bore and thread the inside and then I'll mount it on the lathe and I'll do the step that's going to fit inside the chuck. Then I'll take that off and I will machine the step on this one um, to fit inside the back of the chuck. And after that I'll work on the, the locking ring. This is what, you know, threads onto the collet. And then once all those three pieces are done and I've put them over in the mill in the, on the rotary table and drilled and tapped mounting holes and everything, then I'll finish the interior of the back of the chuck and I will uh, finish bore and everything to match the back plates and then from there I can continue to do the finishing steps. So what I worked on today was I started working on the back plate that's going to fit on the lathe uh, for the collet chuck. I finished bored the inside to the right diameter for the inch and a half eight thread and then did this counter bore in the back just like you see on all of the back plates that come from the factory. Then I went to go thread it and realized that I didn't have anything that was big enough to thread it internally and it was going to take too long to make one by hand. So I do have this grooving tool. Uh, this is the only insert I have for it. So I ended up ordering some threading inserts that will fit in that that are big enough. And hopefully they'll come in tomorrow and I can work on that tomorrow. But today, so instead what I did was I finished turned the outside of this one. This is for the dividing head. Finished turned the outside, did the step, and this diameter. This is a diameter that fits into the, the chuck itself that seats it, you know, so it's concentric. So the chuck will have to match both back plates. And I also put a little undercut in it. So the next step will be to put it on the rotary table and drill and tap the holes in the back. Okay, so I have the dividing head set up with the chuck with the jaws that I ground in earlier today to do these uh, 5 16 holes around the perimeter of the back plate. So a lot of people don't know how to use a dividing head or are intimidated by one, but it's actually very easy. This is an LW chuck, 11 inch, which means I can do 11 inches uh, diameter part um, dividing head. It's a 40 to 1 gear ratio, so every 40 revolutions of the handle is one full revolution of the chuck. The easiest thing to do with a 40 to 1 gear ratio is use an 18 hole plate, which means there's 18 holes around the circumference. So with an 18 hole plate on a 40 to 1 gear ratio, every two holes is one degree, which makes it very easy because you can do any degree, you know, whole degree uh, divisions. So with an 18 hole plate, it makes things very easy to do for this. So I have six locations to do, which means they're 60 degrees apart. Every two holes is one degree. So I want to do 60. So in actuality, I have to go 120 holes to get 60 degrees. So I know that, and I have 18 holes per revolution. So I divide that by 18, which means I have six revolutions and one two-thirds revolution, the .666. That's two-thirds. So I happen to know 
that 12 out of 18 is two thirds. So that means I have to do six revolutions and 12 holes on the 18 hole plate to get 60 degrees. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and set the fingers. The fingers help you with your hole spacing. I've started in the first hole of the 18, you know, it just makes it easier. That's my first hole. So I'll come around and I'll do six hole revolutions and wind back up in that hole. That'll be six revolutions. So you don't count the hole that the pin is already in for your 12 out of 18 holes. So this one here would be one, two, and I count it all the way around, and this here would be my 12th hole. So I'll do my six hole revolutions. I'd come around and do six revolutions. That's six revolutions there. Then I would come around to this hole here, and I let the pin drop, and I push it in until it drops in on its own. That's my two thirds of an 18 revolution. Then I swing the fingers around and start from there again. So I'll do my six revolutions. That would be my six revolutions, and then come around here, and that would be my 12th hole. And then I just keep doing that until I get all of them. I'm actually curious to see what kind of run out I had on the, the outside portion of these jaws that I ground in earlier today, because uh, that's where I'm holding them. I've never, you know, checked them or anything. And uh, they're actually pretty darn close. I mean, I've only got about a thousandth of run out over the whole part, which is very good. I was very impressed with that. And uh, set up the drill chuck, do some edge finding, and get drilling some holes. So I went ahead and spotted the holes, made sure everything was okay and everything worked out good. Um, so now I'm setting up to drill the holes. So what I've got here is a, a quill stop that I use instead of, I need to replace this and get one of the push button ones so I can slide it up and down. But for now I got this one that you just clamp on. I got that set. So what I'm gonna do is bring the table up until I come to the top of the hole. You know, it's supposed to be a half inch deep and it's nothing critical, so I'm just going until the hole touches. And I come over here and I'll set this to zero. We're close enough. And then I come up a half inch with the table. So I come up one, two, three, four, five. Five turns is a half inch. So now, when I touch off on the top of the hole, every time I just come down to that stop and that's a half inch on every hole. So I just did the first couple holes. I just want to show you the dividing head in action. So I got the, the finger down here and I'm on the second hole. I come around one, two, three, four, five, six, and then my two thirds of 18 is there. And then I'll reset the finger. and drill my hole. And I'm just coming down to a stop every time. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two thirds, and reset the finger. So after I did the holes on the outside with the dividing head, I set up the rotary table on the other side of the table and did the counter bores in the back of the backing plate. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this one uh, to fit the dividing head. So when I made the original backing plate for the chuck for the dividing head, I had this apart. I was restoring it and I was able to use this as my thread gauge. Um, but I can't do that now because it's together. So over here, I'm working on just making up a simple plastic one. Uh, that I'm going to use to test fit to make sure that this will fit on the dividing head without having to take it out of the lathe. wanted to show you my setup for internally threading the back plates. You can see I've started already. I'm already about 35 thousandths in. Um, you can see that I have the threading tool upside down. I find internally threading, it's easier to do it this way. You have the, the threading tool upside down and it's as if you were threading the outside of a part you can leave your compound at this angle. If you were to do it with the threading tool facing this way, right side up, you would have to have the compound facing this way, and then you run into clearance problems when you come in closer. So this way everything stays away from the chuck and away from in interfering with anything. And you can also see when you're cutting much easier. You can still see in to see uh, you know, how things are doing in there. 
So that's just a little trick that I do. The original thread gauge I was going to make out of plastic got messed up, so I made one out of steel. This is the original back plate that I've made. Threads in there. Just a little bit of room. And I used the three wire method and measured this, you know, with measurement over wires, and it's exactly the same as the dividing head. And I've just creeped up on my thread here, and I've got it perfect. That threads in perfectly. A little bit of wiggle, which is good, and it'll fit on perfectly over on the dividing head. So I just finished threading the back plate that's going to go on the lathe. This is inch and a half, eight. The dividing head was two and a quarter inch, ten. So this is the, the thread gauge I'm using. This is actually a thing I made uh, to mount a chuck to the drill press table uh, for doing holes like a rotary table. So that fits in there perfectly. A little bit of wiggle. I might take it over to the four jaw chuck, which has a back plate that I know fits perfectly on the lathe. Threads right in with a little bit of wiggle. So what I'm doing now is, since this back plate's going to be on the lathe with the chuck, I'm putting it on the lathe to machine the rest of the features. That way everything comes out completely concentric. I just threaded it on here for the first time and this fit is really good. I mean, I have a little bit of wiggle, not much, and then it tightens up. I don't know whether you know, it's my thread or the spindle thread, but it tightens up a little bit right down the end and it's perfect. I mean, there is no slop. So this thing should come out really concentric and be very repeatable when it's done. So I've got all the turning, except for the undercut on this lip here, done on the back plate for the lathe. Um, what I had to do, instead of using the regular tool post, you know, with a turning tool, I needed some extra reach because I couldn't get in far enough with the tool post and the stop. The carriage stop stops here up against the casting and I couldn't get any further. So I've used this with uh, these boring bars. I have a couple big boring bars that I use this tool post with, but this time I put it upside down so I could turn on the outside with it. And I have this block that I had made up to get it, the cutter on center height and uh, use that instead of using a regular turning tool. So I'll just put the undercut in this and then we'll go over to the dividing head and put those holes around the outside and the rotary table and put the mounting holes on the back base. So I've got both back plates done now. I didn't show any video doing this one because it was the exact same thing as dividing head. These holes are actually for a bar, so you can use it to lock and loosen it when you're putting it on the lathe of the dividing head. What I'm working on now is the lock ring. I have this bore done and this face done on the inside. The next step will be to bore and thread this to inch and a quarter 20, which will fit a 5C collet. Flip it around and grab it by the inside turn the outside to the right diameter and do the opposite face. Then after that, it gets some grooves and holes in it. Again, the holes are for a locking bar to lock onto the collet and the grooves are so you can have some something to grab by when you're spinning it by hand. Um, and that fits into the main body and it sits around this boss here and there'll be a bearing race that gets cut into both of them for ball bearings to allow it to spin freely when it sits in there when it's done. So right now I'm doing probably one of the most critical steps of the loop collet chuck. I am trepanning slash boring the inside diameter and the inside boss. Um, so what I've got is a trepanning tool brazed onto the end of a piece of round stock. That way I can have a short trepanning tool, just the length that I need, and it's nice and rigid. I don't have to have a really long, skinny trepanning tool to get in there, and I can eliminate a lot of chatter. So this has to get bored to the dimension that's on the back plate. And if it's not a very, very good fit, then everything from there is multiplied in terms of run out. So I want it to fit really perfectly. And I'm gonna take my time on this and just really creep up on it till I get it to fit nice and snug on the back plate. So I've been creeping up on my dimension 
and this is hopefully going to be my last pass, the spring pass. You can see, I know it's kind of hard to see with the lighting, but all that little dust right on the end of the tool there, that's about all I'm taking off because the back plate fits in just a little too snugly. So hopefully this spring pass will clean it up and it'll fit on perfectly. And then we'll have a look after it's done. So I just finished boring the inside of the body of the chuck for the back plate. Just took my spring pass and I'm about to fit the back plate on. And that is perfect. It slides right in. There is no wiggle at all. That is perfect. So now when I flip around the, the body and machine the bore and the taper for the collet, everything should be in line. And if I take this off and on, it should line back up perfectly every time. So what I'm about to do is not necessarily the most accurate uh, part of the chuck, but it is one of the most critical. And what I mean by that is I'm about to cut this ball race. Uh, so this is a groove. The ball bearings go in, in the chuck, the back plate, and in the lock ring. That w allows the, uh, the lock ring to spin freely. It's held in by all these ball bearings. So it doesn't necessarily matter if this diameter is... Uh, exactly what the print says it is, um, but it does matter that it's the same on all of them. That's why it's the most critical. So what I've done is I've scribed my line where it's supposed to be, and you can see there I've scratched with the tool to make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be. And what I've done is I've locked all my gibs. That way, what I'm going to do is cut the groove in this, take this out, mount the four jaw chuck probably, depending on how much run out I get with the three jaw chuck. Um, and cut the groove in all of the parts, all with this setup. So I have all the, the back features of the main body of the chuck done. I wasn't really thrilled with the way the groove came out. You can see I had a lot of chatter. I polished it a little bit with some really fine sandpaper just to, you know, knock any really high spots off. But rolling the bearings around in it, I mean, just dragging them along, you can't really feel any of the grooves. I think it'll be okay. And I wasn't really thrilled. You can see the bottom of the trepan there how that came out with all the chatter uh, but you know even in the instructions it mentions that and uh, you know it says that it's all going to be covered up when it's done I mean the lock ring sits in there and you won't see any of that it's going to sit right down there so I just wish it came out a little better but uh, it's uh, coming along nice so far and I'll uh, do the grooves in the other pieces and uh, see how it goes I have all my grooves done now uh, my chatter problems were definitely coming from overhang uh, from of the part because as you can see the chatter uh, from the chuck body overhanging so much and then these two here this one not quite as bad a few big dings but uh not as much chatter and then this one here you can definitely see it. those are all from using the three jaw and four jaw chucks whereas the one with the back plate came out really nice because it was so stout and close to the headstock it didn't chatter at all i don't think it'll be a big problem you know maybe you'll get a little bit of grinding noise when it's together uh, but I don't think it's going to affect the function at all. So I just assembled this real quick to make sure that it functions properly. And uh, I've got just a handful of ball bearings in there just to, for the test. Uh, the back plate is seated firmly against the back of the chuck. And this spins freely. And you get what's called the flywheel effect. You get the heavy weight that just keeps spinning the wheel. Uh, and it spins very, very smoothly. It's got a little bit of radial play, which I don't know if you can see. You can see that moving around a little bit, which the, the plans actually call for. They are 8th inch ball bearings, which would be a, a 62 thou radius, uh, but you cut, or I cut, uh, a 70 thou radius. Uh, that allows them to move around a little bit, so if there's any misalignment, it accounts for it. And, uh, that came out really nice. And the next step will be to drill and tap the body of the chuck uh, to accept the back plate, and then cut some finger grooves and stuff in the lock wheel. I went to go drill and tap the holes in the back of the chuck to mount the, the um, back plate to and realized that without a three jaw chuck on the rotary table, I don't have a good way of clamping this. I can't clamp directly through the middle because there's no clearance on the back. There's no counterbore or anything. It's just that diameter all the way through. I can't clamp on top of here because the force would clamp down on nothing and I would risk tipping the part. 
And I could have worked out something coming through here or coming over and clamping down into the middle, but that was a lot of work, and I want to have a three-jaw chuck that can mount on here anyway, so I'll show you what I'm working on next. I got this piece of scrap from work. It's the old cap to a hydraulic cylinder. Uh, what I've done is machined the back to fit the counter bore of the rotary table, and I've got a countersunk hole in there. Now, it's got a lot of holes in it, but a couple of them work out, actually. So I can use these two holes here. I'll either counter bore or countersink those to bolt it down to the rotary table using the T-slots. And then what I'll do is I'll face this boss off. And uh, I've got this that I used to use in the drill press. This mounts to the drill press table through the hole in the table and the chuck mounts onto that. So I could use that like a rotary table. But I have a rotary table now, so I have no need for this anymore. So what I'm gonna do is cut the stud off the back and press fit it in here and bolt it through the back just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'll be able to mount the three jaw chuck onto the rotary table to do the holes in the back of the chuck body and I'll have it for further use for other projects. I got my adapter plate done. I just have some hex bolts holding it on now. I didn't uh, countersink it or counterbore it. I have the inch and a half eight adapter from the drill press turned down and pressed in there. Um, and I have the knee all the way down and the quill all the way up. And that's what I have for clearance with my uh, letter F drill for the 5 16 18 holes. So in the future, I think I might want to put this chuck on the old back plate to mount it on here because this one's much taller. Uh, but but it works. Uh, so we'll uh, drill and tap those holes and then get it mounted up in the lathe and do the bore and the taper for the collet. So I'm on what should be my final pass of the bore for the collet. Uh, about a half thou under, taking about a half thou off now. I may have to take a spring pass depending on how the fit is. Uh, but this should be it. After this, I'll take the collet and put it in the bore. It obviously won't go in because the taper will hit but I need to match the taper with the compound slide using an indicator to match it exactly. So that'll be the next step after this. So the bore is done. I had fit it originally to the set of uh, standard collets that I had bought, but I had this metric set of collets that I've had for a long time, and it turns out they're about a thousandth to a thousandth and a half bigger. So I didn't really want to, but I ended up making it fit the metric collets really nice. It's a little tight at the beginning. Once you get it in, it slides right in, and that'll be okay because that front portion will be taken out with the taper. So that's got a really nice, snug fit that you can still move around, that's perfect. So it'll be a little loose on the standard collets, but I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. So now what I'm gonna do is take an indicator with this in here like this, take an indicator and mount it on the compound slide and match the compound slide to this taper and machine the taper in the face. I have my last word indicator set up in the tool holder here and I've just been going back and forth adjusting it and I think I'm at a pretty good spot. I have the compound locked down now and I'm well within a half thousandth. Of course it moves a little every time your hand comes around with the dial but uh, well within a half thousandth there. I think that'll be perfect. I just finished the tapered part of the bore for the 5C collet. I just creeped up on it and did my finish pass, a couple spring passes, so the collet sits nice and flush with the nose of the chuck. So the next step will be turn this down. This gets turned down to a taper, and this gets turned at an angle as well, just to clean up the letters, and there'll be a radius in here. Uh, and then after that, I need to put some holes and finger grooves in the locking ring, and then that should be it for machining, and then it'll just be paint and assembly after that. So if you've been watching me build this collet chuck, you'll remember back when I did the bearing race and all the parts, uh, this part in here, I had some chatter problems. So I know that my lathe has problems with large radius cutters. I've not been able to do them 
in the lathe due to chatter problems. It's a lot of surface area and it causes a lot of chatter problems. So what I did was I took a ball end mill and I put the radius in with a ball end mill on the rotary table. Now this was just a little bit wider than this ball end mill. You can see the little flat right on the end there if you look hard enough. So what I'm going to do now is just take this over in the lathe and just touch this angled surface again just to come in and clean up that flat so it blends in real nice. And then I'll do a little bit of polishing so you don't even really know that this was done in two different operations. I just put the holes and the finger grooves in the lock ring. Uh, the holes, there's 12 of them all the way around, and the finger grooves, there's 24. Uh, for the finger grooves, I used an eighth inch ball end mill at 60 thou depth, that's half the diameter. And for the short ones here, I had a stop on the table, I had just a bolt, locked it down, and uh, bumped that every time, and, and that way they come out at the exact same spot every time. So now what's left is, I just got to, I don't know if you can see it, but they need to be polished up a little bit. They're a little rough inside from the ball end mill and polish the, the outside as well. And then I think everything will be done. So this is the finished loop collet chuck. I have everything painted up. All the exterior surfaces have been polished. The lock ring has been polished. All the bar ball bearings have been installed. And this thing is awesome. This looks great. I had masked off the exterior surfaces with tape. I painted this by hand and then wiped off the excess paint on the faces with a rag with acetone. And this came out awesome. So we'll put it in the lathe and we'll test it out. So I just showed you the finished collet chuck. And what I've done is I've put it on the lathe and I'm going to test the run out. I've got a half inch dowel pin chucked up. So I'll just move over to the high spot. I'll turn the lathe on. And as you can see, there's hardly any run out. That's perfect. Probably a couple tenths. That's exactly what I was looking for.